Right then, here's a question for you. Do you accurately know what pace or what heart rate you should be in for zone one, zone two, zone three, and so on? Do you know what pace you should be going at for a half marathon? And do you know what your threshold pace or heart rate is? Well, these are all really important questions, but I hazard a guess most of you here don't accurately know the answers to these, which unfortunately means that you could either be training ineffectively or not getting the most out of yourself. Now, there is a simple answer to this. Well, I say simple, it does require a bit of effort. It is the threshold run test. And today, I'm gonna to be explaining how to do one and why. Okay, then let's start by discussing what your threshold actually is and why it's so important to us. So our anaerobic threshold is the point at which we start to produce lactate at such a rate that our bodies can't keep up with processing it and removing it, and therefore resulting in a performance plateau or decline, which I'm sure many of you have felt before, that feeling when your legs just kind of turn to mush when you've gone a little bit too hard. And this is typically regarded as the best pace you can sustain for an hour. So the higher your threshold, theoretically, the faster and the higher harder you can go before you experience this effect. And this threshold kind of forms the basis for your training zones, race paces, and so on. Ignoring this, or guessing them, could mean that you're completely missing the objective of a session. In most cases, probably means actually going too hard and therefore not actually reaping the rewards that you should be from a workout. So let's look at how you find out your threshold for running. So probably the most obvious method for measuring this would be to do a 60 minute all out effort because after all it is the best pace you can sustain for an hour. But let's be honest, if that was the only test, we'd very rarely do it. It's extremely difficult, very mentally taxing, and it's not exactly something you're gonna to want to repeat periodically. So fortunately, there are a number of alternative tests that have been created over the years. There's the 20 minute test, the 30 minute test, the critical velocity test, the three minute critical velocity test, the ramp test, it goes on. Now obviously the most accurate tests have to be those that are performed in a lab where they can accurately measure your lactate levels, your oxygen consumption, and so on and so forth. But today I'm gonna to be targeting the kind of test that you can do wherever and whenever, and anyone can do these. Now I find that from experience, it's the 30 minute test that tends to be the most accurate. Now it's not to say that the others don't work and they're inaccurate, but I think it depends very much on the type of athlete that's doing the test. Now I've found in the past that the shorter tests can throw up some very varied and inaccurate results but that's mostly down to the type of athlete doing it. So for instance, if you're an endurance athlete used to running 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, and so on and so forth, then you're probably more suited to a kind of test that is gonna be over a more sustained period of time and more in tune with the paces that you're used to. So the protocol for this 30 minute test is quite simple. It's a 30 minute all out effort. You should aim to keep a constant pace throughout, ideally performed on a flat terrain and with a good surface. And it must be performed solo, which might sound odd, but it's actually quite important. And I'll get onto that in just a moment. And once you've completed this, you should then take your average pace and heart rate from the final 20 minutes. I know, why remove the first 10 minutes? Well, typically, our heart rate and our pace settles after the first 10 minutes. So you should still make sure it's an all-out effort for the 30 minutes, but that's why we only focus on the final 20. Now, why should it be performed solo? Well simply because we're trying to find the best pace that you can sustain for an hour. And typically we all find an extra gear when we're racing or being pushed by others. So if you were to do a 30 minute all out effort with others around you, you're going to get the best pace you can sustain probably for 30 minutes rather than for the 60 minutes. Does that make sense? I hope so, just run it solo, okay. Now with that, that then produces what many people refer to as their functional threshold pace or their functional threshold heart rate. And this is where the fun starts. We can then start calculating our zones. So on screen right now, we'll pop up the zones with their paces and their heart rates. But I'm gonna talk through the paces as an example. 
So zone one should be slower than 78% of your functional threshold pace. Zone two, between 78 to 88% of your functional threshold pace. Zone three, between 88 to 94% of this pace. Zone four, 95 to 100% of your FTP. Zone 5A, 100 to 103% of your FTP. Zone 5B, 104 to 111% of your FTP. And finally, zone 5C should be faster than 111% of your FTP. And then also for threshold and tempo workouts, you now actually know your accurate threshold pace. And the idea on these workouts is to stay as close to this threshold pace as possible. Stray too far either side and it kind of negates the objective of the workout altogether. And then there is one big final benefit and that is around racing. Yet yeah, you can use this threshold pace to predict what time you should go over a 5K, 10K, half marathon and so on and so forth. Now of course you can get very geeky here and try and calculate it yourself or as most people do, just go online and use one of the very good online calculators. Plug in your threshold pace and it should be able to predict what time you should go over these distances and the paces to go with that. Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to give us a follow over on social media and subscribe to us just down below and let us know how you get on with your threshold run test just down below.